A very good morning to you all. Welcome to uh, our service at St. Andrews uh, in what we're terming hashtag together apart. It's uh, wonderful to see so many of you this morning and uh, do welcome you to this time together. Do encourage you under the chat tab, if you can find it at the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen, if you're on a, if you're on a um, iPad or phone, um, just tap the screen in a blank space and it sh the, the uh, control should pop up for you. Uh, please just indicate under chat how many people are participating with you. So if it's just yourself, one. If it's more than yourself, obviously two or three or four. Um, to say, uh, if you would like to see each other um, and you're on a, you're on a, um, uh, a laptop or a, or a desktop, in the top right-hand corner should be nine little squares. And if you put your mouse over that, it should turn into a little circle with the squares inside. If you click on that, you should then see everybody who's connected. And if you're on a phone or, a, um, or an iPad and you scroll to the right, you will see people there. So I do encourage you to, to do that. Um, today, we'd like to welcome Bishop Jeff as our presider. Uh, I will be preaching. Uh, Graham Michael is our lay minister, and Rosemary Wallace will be responding on behalf of us all. So we do encourage you to keep your microphone off. Uh, and when you hear Rosemary speak, it should be in connection with the bold print in your uh, liturgy for today. So I do encourage you to, um, to use that. And... Um, just to say, enjoy, enjoy this time as we, as we come together and worship God in our midst. So please do attempt to keep your microphone off, um, but uh, otherwise um, enjoy this time as we participate from our homes uh, together. So Bishop Jeff, if we, could, if we could hand over to you, please. Thank you. Shall we pray together? Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord. Praise God, you servants of the Lord. Blessed be God, creator, redeemer, and spirit of truth. Blessed be God's name, now and forever. Let us joyfully proclaim together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. We come now to our time of penitence. Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God, with all your heart, and with all your being, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In a moment of silence, let us call to mind and then confess our sins, firmly resolved, to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with our neighbor.
we confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, let us pray. Risen Christ, you revealed yourself to the disciples and calmed their fears. Meet us in our uncertainties and walk with us into the new life you bring. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning will be read by Chris King. From Acts 2, verses 14, and then 36 to 41. Peter's message. Then Peter stood up with the other 11 apostles and in a loud voice began to speak to the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, Listen to me and let me tell you what this means. These people are not drunk. Oh, my apologies. Verses 36. All the people of Israel then are to know for sure that this Jesus, whom you crucified, is the one that God has made Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were deeply troubled and said to Peter and the other apostles, What shall we do, brothers? Peter said to them, Each one of you must turn away from his sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins will be forgiven, and you will receive God's gift, the Holy Spirit. For God's promise was made to you and your children, and to all who are far away, all whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Peter made his appeal to them, and with many other words he urged them, saying, Save yourself from the punishment coming on this wicked people. Many of them believed his message and were baptized and about 3,000 people were added to the group that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our appointed psalm for this Sunday morning is Psalm 116, and we will be reading verses 1 to 4, and then 12 to 17, as, as printed on your, on your sheets. Rosemary and I will read the verses alternately, and I will begin. I love you, O God, because you have heard the voice of my supplication, because you have inclined your ear to me whenever I called upon you. The cords of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon your holy name. O oh God, I pray you, save my life. Gracious are you and righteous. You are full of compassion. I will fulfill my vows to God in the presence of all people. Precious in your sight, O oh God, is the death of your servants. O oh God, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. 
I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon your holy name. I will fulfill my vows to you in the presence of all your people. In the courts of God's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Let us pray. Faithful God, rescue us from our faithlessness, that we may fulfill our vows to you and ever call on your holy name. Amen. Glory to God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel will be read this morning by Penny Middlecourt. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 24, beginning at verse 13. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened to on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Well, a very good uh, afternoon, afternoon, very good morning. I've been used to doing my, uh, my daily thoughts, so uh, haven't quite caught up with the fact that it's earlier today. But uh, wonderful to be with you and able to preach this morning. Uh, just as I begin, a reminder, if you haven't yet found the, um, the, the button that says chat, please do so, and just put your, um, 
just indicate how many people are participating in the service with you this morning. That would be, uh, that would be much appreciated. Um, then as we, uh, as we begin um, today, of course, we, we've been reminded as we began that uh, it's the third Sunday uh, of Easter. We're still in Eastertide, that period in which we encounter Christ in the readings. It's also the 31st day of our national lockdown and uh, an opportunity to just give thanks to God for sustaining us to this point. But our scripture readings today, they draw us into Luke's account of the resurrection. It's a little different from our journey with John's gospel last week. For most of us, uh, I suspect the gospel accounts all merge together into a single story. And we are hard pressed to remember the unique story of each gospel. Luke's story is significant in that Jesus' first appearance, first resurrection appearance, is to two disciples previously unknown to us, old Cleopas and his companion, on the dusty road to the little village of Emmaus. The village of Emmaus is sufficiently insignificant that today we have no idea whether it was east, west, north, or south of Jerusalem. But more important than the village is actually this encounter that takes place between the two disciples and Jesus. The season of Eastertide is all about encounter with the risen Christ and the shared journey to Emmaus in which the two disciples eventually recognize Jesus is important to Luke and important for Luke in the story. Journey is important. Journeys in Luke lead to a recognition of what God is up to in Luke's world. And there are a variety of journey narratives in both of Luke's books the Gospel of Luke and, and also the Book of Acts. Significant events take place both during and at the end of journeys, beginning with Jesus' birth in Bethlehem after a journey from Nazareth, Nazareth in the north um, to a shared supper in Emmaus that we hear of today in today's reading and uh, beyond in a multitude of journeys in the Book of Acts all of which have significant impact on people's lives and also on the spread of the gospel in the first century. Luke's focus on journey is a reminder that God's people are a pilgrim people, journeying in response to God's prompting, from Adam and Eve being driven from the Garden of Eden, uh, probably slightly more than just a prompting in that context, uh, to Abraham responding to God's instruction to go to a land that God promised to show him, to an enslaved Israelite nation escaping Egypt to find the promised land, to Jesus' journey to Jerusalem and to crucifixion, to this Emmaus Road encounter, and of course beyond through history to the present journey of lockdown that we as God's people experience together with communities around our world. In today's collect, we are reminded of those important words of Jesus that we focused on last week, peace be with you. These were words which gave the disciples a modicum of comfort in the midst of their fear and their confusion. In meeting Cleopas and his companion today, uh, we are reminded by the collect of other emotions and feelings that the disciples were experiencing. And the collect today focuses us on their feelings of uncertainty. I don't know about you, uh, but I must admit that I've always wondered why it took these two disciples so long to recognize Jesus. But of course, uh, they weren't expecting to. Who, who expects a dead person to be walking down the road with you? And so, of course, they didn't recognize him. They are caught up in trying to make sense of everything. And uh, as Jesus meets them on the road, he meets them in the midst of their confusion and in the midst of their uncertainty. Uh, he gives them the time and the space uh, to tell their story. I perhaps shouldn't be, but I'm, I'm often amazed at how often talking through my own confusions and uncertainties with someone else, um, in doing that, things begin to make sense. Having things go round and round and round and round in my mind, rarely gets me anywhere. But sometimes even a brief conversation 
with another person um, will bring an element of clarification and understanding. Perhaps it's that in sharing the story that the, the mind is focused and that what hasn't made any sense gains a little bit of order and uh, new understandings arise from that. That certainly would seem to be the experience of Cleopas and his companion today. They tell Jesus the story of the week's events. He mirrors those events back to them in the light of scripture. And after some good exercise, a good chat, and an opportunity to sit down to a meal to restore their strength, at that point, suddenly, it clicks together for them. They recognize Jesus. And of course, in that moment of recognition, he then disappears. And again, how true, uh, for me anyway, um, as, I, as things come together, um, and I just think I have a hold on it, uh, suddenly it seems to be gone again, and, and one begins to search a little more. Interestingly, in terms of the journey to Emmaus, um, movement here is involved. They are walking together. They're going from one place to another. Um, something I suspect you're probably missing as much as I am, that ability just to go for a walk, uh, climb on a bicycle, go and play some golf, whatever it might be. Um, movement is important uh, for settling the soul. It somehow, certainly for me, gives me in that space to just let things um, find their place in my, in my heart and my life. I found yesterday during my time of reflection at midday in the church that I was circling the altar uh, as I worked through my own anxiety of what more time in lockdown down will, meal, will mean uh, for, for me and for us. Uh, conscious in that space of the church building's emptiness um, and an anxiety within me in my realization that gatherings will continue to be prohibited as we work our way from this hard lockdown of level five uh, to an almost normal environment of, of level one. Um, and probably the reality will be we'll only be able to gather as we've been used to uh, once the lockdown is, is completely lifted. And that was exercising my mind and heart yesterday. Uh, and walking, walking around the altar uh, helped. But as I did that, like the two on the road to Emmaus, I realized that I had Jesus circling that altar with me. And I had in hand the Eucharistic scriptures of the day. And it was Jesus' words to the disciples on an earlier journey, one over water, when Jesus met them in their exhaustion, in the midst of their fear, and said to them, it is I, do not be afraid. Um, more accurately, uh, the Greek actually has Jesus saying, I am, do not be afraid. I can't claim that in that moment, my anxiety lifted completely, but I was able to recognize God in that I am. And I found myself able to trust again in God's presence in this lockdown. It touched that anxiety that I was holding and settled it. And so both for the journey that we will experience in lockdown, but also um, for whatever lies before us, uh, trusting that God is and will be at all times our provision. I'm sure that there will be moments for me where I will doubt that once again, but I think that's the joy of our faith. It's the joy of an opportunity of prayer and conversation. It's the gift of the scriptures to us, that they, they bring us face to face with, with God and, and all that God calls us to. Focusing again on, on the Emmaus journey, it's an, impo an, an important aspect of uh, the journey to Emmaus is that these two disciples have an opportunity to lament, to rehearse again the events of their past week, to express their unhappiness, to mourn the loss of their hopes and of their dreams. And we hear them saying to Jesus, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. And there's a, a real element of pathos in those words. As the impact of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and its impact on our social, economic, and body politic uh, becomes clearer to us, we also need to lament all that we have lost and are losing. 
I would suggest that we really need to find the time to do this, uh, to allow lament to be the pressure release for our anxieties and our fears. Uh, for us to have that, encourage, to have that courage uh, to bear our souls and our lives to God. I think we've, we've largely lost the art of lamenting. Um, but in essence, it's really just expressing our pain to God, being real in allowing our emotion to overflow into our prayer in all its, its raggedness and its rawness. And trusting as we do that, that God already knows it all and is infinitely capable of receiving and enfolding um, our anger with all its chaos. And, and so I really do encourage you to, to find time this week to lament um, and even to allow it to be un-Anglican, to allow it to be physical and noisy, uh, allow it to be real. Um, every now and then I, I have a very deep sense that, that as Anglicans we, we need a bit of that Pentecostalism in our lives in these kind of moments where we, we allow it to kind of all hang out. And I think as we lament, that, that really is important. But I'd encourage you also not to rush lament. Lament takes time. Um, and sometimes, although obviously not always, um, as it was for the uh, Cleopas and his friend on this journey, it is a journey that leads to recognition and, and ultimately to new life. Uh, years ago, I had a, a spiritual director, uh, some of you may know him, Michael Delisle. Uh, he was my spiritual director while I was an ordinand in training. And he encouraged me the one time I went to see him. I, I was struggling with a, a, a very deep anger. I uh, can't remember exactly what it was about. I think I'd possibly been dumped by a girlfriend. Um, but he encouraged me to go into the chapel and to quite literally shout at the cross. Uh, to give God a really good piece of my mind. Um, I probably need to own up to you that I found it hard to find the courage to actually shout verbally at the cross. Uh, but I did sit there and quietly give God a solid piece of my mind uh, about whatever it was that I was struggling with at that particular moment. I think we are uncomfortable, and certainly I found my discomfort in kind of speaking quite as boldly and brashly to God. But uh, there really is a need to, to vent, and God is a good place to vent. Um, I'm alive talking to you this morning, uh, testimony that the fact that lightning didn't strike me down um, in, that, in that moment. And so let's trust that as we, we share our own emotion, our own feeling, our own struggles with God uh, at this time. Allow lament to be that pressure release. The journey to Emmaus for Cleopas and his friends, um, it ends with recognition. It's, there, there is an awareness of encountering the risen Christ. There's a new resilience to them. Now, the question I have is what, what caused that recognition? I touched on it a little just now. But the conversation during that journey uh, from Jerusalem through to Emmaus had prepared them. They'd had the opportunity to lament, to be admonished, in fact, for their foolishness, uh, to reflect on their experience in the light of scripture, and to recognize a greater purpose to all that they had been through, to, to all that had been happening. And so then as Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to him, they were immediately taken back to an evening meal. Sorry, I lost my notes there for a moment. They, they were immediately taken back to an evening meal shared only a few short days before. And uh, boom, they recognized Jesus in that moment. In that, we see that the journey to Emmaus has some quite strong Eucharistic overtones, the service that we're sharing in now from lament and absolution to immersion in scripture and prayer. Uh, prayer ultimately is conversation and a shared meal in which Christ is recognized. And I'd like to suggest to us that every time you and I celebrate the Eucharist together, we experience our own Emmaus journey. The journey in which we share the Eucharist 
under lockdown in our homes, either, either alone or with family, uh, yet together despite our separation, we likely experience more profoundly the Eucharist as a shared meal, something we normally, uh, or something that is normal to our home experience, something that we can apply in fact to every meal that we share together. There is there's something profound for me in this. Uh, it is more the experience of Cleopas and his friend than we would perhaps normally experience in the building bound church ritual, um, as wonderful as that ritual can be. Um, but in our homes, we experience the resurrected Christ in the context that is every day to us. Um, and we experience it at the moment within all the goodness and the pain of relationship in lockdown. In the midst of all the uncertainty that has been brought about by the pandemic, in the midst of our, our personal, our communal fears for the impact of a tanked economy on, on our own and others' lives, um, of broken dreams and for many of us for plans that we've had to put on hold, we're reminded uh, that this Emmaus journey is our journey. And so I would encourage us to draw from today's gospel to draw from it that God does walk with us, quite possibly unrecognized much of the time, but present nonetheless in all of it. I would encourage us to be open to the possibility of encounter, uh, to the reality of encounter in the everyday experience of life and relationship. And for us to know in this encounter, um, or to discover within this encounter, a source of resilience and of hope. That reminder that God is present. And may God's presence be sufficient for the moment, may it be sufficient for today, uh, may it be sufficient for our journey of lockdown and for our future. And so I'd like to uh, close with a prayer from Patrick Otuama's wonderful book, uh, Daily Prayer with the Corimila Community in Ireland. Um, it's a book that's really traveled with me through these last 31 days, uh, a source of morning and midday and evening prayer. And uh, this prayer is one that is connected in one of the daily readings to uh, the Emmaus journey. And so I'm going to pray it through twice. I think sometimes it's good to, to hear something a second time. Uh, so I invite you uh, to, to pray. Hidden Jesus, wandering along the way like a stranger, hidden along the way in many stories and many faces. May we listen to our hearts when they burn with life, knowing that you are speaking to us. Because you are with us along the way in the faces of many strangers. I pray that again. Hidden Jesus wandering along the way like a stranger, hidden along the way in many stories and many faces. May we listen to our hearts when they burn with life, knowing that you are speaking to us, because you are with us along the way in the faces of many strangers. Amen. Before we continue with our prayers for today, let us take a moment of quiet reflection upon the words that Mark has just spoken to us. As we lead into our prayers, scattered throughout our community, let us focus and unify our thoughts, minds, and hearts, thus petitioning God as one united body. Lord Jesus, we praise you today 
for the extent of your love and your great gift of life. We rejoice even in the midst of our loneliness and anxiety that you came into our world not just to be an earthly messiah but a universal savior. We thank you not only for everything you have done, but for everything you have yet to do, especially at this frightening time. Remind us each day that you are not simply able to meet our needs, but able to give far more than we can ever ask or imagine. And so may we look forward with faith and live each day in the light of your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for your church throughout the world, that it may share to the full in the work of your Son, bringing hope to all in the midst of their despair. At this time, with your church scattered as we are, we give you praise that through technology, we are still able to gather and in so doing, receive your grace, renew our faith and experience the love of Christ. We also at this time remember all Christians throughout the world and especially in our parish, who do not have the use of technology. May they not feel forgotten, but rather through faith, experience your love and your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we bring to you now the hope and needs of the world. Look with grace upon those threatened by poverty, hunger, fear, and death. Guide those in whose hands are the various governments of the world, and may they, through the power of the Holy Spirit, have the discernment, judgment, and insight to be able to guide their people back to safety and a virus-free environment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, reach out to all who are suffering and minister your love. Grant relief from loneliness and isolation, comfort in sorrow, hope in despair, and reassurance in moments of fear and, and anxiety. Bless those and those dear to them whose lives have been stricken by the virus and especially those mourning the loss of loved ones. Now, in a moment of silence, we bring before you all who are known personally to us and are in special need for whatever reason of your comfort and healing. And here we remember Denise Ackerman and Laurie and pray for a speedy and complete recovery after her operation as a result of a recent fall. We also pray for a complete recovery of Nomsa from her recent illness. Lord, we ask that you fill them all with your peace and support them with your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask in this time of fear and despair that you grant to us and to all your people your grace and 
as we believe that you hear those who call upon you. We ask that you accept these our prayers through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We move on to our creed, and together we affirm our faith. I believe and trust in God, the source of all being, who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. So the peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. We greet one another wherever we are. Then we offer to God the bread and the wine that we are to use for this Eucharist. First the bread Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. For us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. For us, for us it becomes, becomes the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. God's Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks for his glorious resurrection from the dead. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. So once someone holds up the bread, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me.
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross and proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. As we look for his coming in glory, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect sacrifice Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We, who are many, are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. The risen, present, uh, the risen Christ is present with us in this sacrament, so let's spend a moment in silence as we worship and adore him. And then we pray together. We come to this table, not because we must, but because we may. Not because we are strong, but because we need strength. We come because we love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. We come because he loves us and gave himself for all. And so, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And as we partake of the bread, we say to one another, the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Then we share the cup together, saying, The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen.
And having received communion, we pause for a moment in silence as we offer our own spirit of thankfulness to God. So give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is gracious. God's mercy endures forever. We say together, Blessing and honour and thanksgiving and praise, more than we can utter, more than we can understand, be to you, O holy and glorious Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, from all angels, all people, all creatures forever and ever. We pray for our world. God bless the world. Give it wisdom at this time. Grant us relief and release. Be with those who are ill and bless the carers fighting this pandemic. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And in these uncertain times, we pray. Lord God, in the season of fear and uncertainty, as we face the threat of the coronavirus, grant us the wisdom and determination to walk in another's shoes, the confidence and the humility to draw closer to you and to those affected. Empower us to pastor those who are ill, to weep for the dead to support the healers, and to care for and love one another. And we offer ourselves in service. God Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the power of the Holy Spirit, enable us to live to your praise and glory. Amen. And the peace of God who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the source of all being, eternal Son and Holy Spirit, be with you all now and always. Amen. Dwell in peace, loving and serving the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, amen. Alleluia, yeah. alleluia. And so as we draw this time of worship uh, to an end, a uh, huge thanks to you all for being with us. Uh, a reminder, in case you haven't, just on the chat tab to indicate uh, how many have been participating with you in this service this morning. And then just to say, if there are any visitors with us, it's been great to have you uh, join us in this uh, Zoom service this morning. Um, just a thank you to Bishop Jeff and to Graham and to Rosemary uh, for giving leadership to this time, uh, and also to Chris King and Penny Middlequirk uh, for doing our readings today. And then just as we finish, uh, congratulations to all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Um, Alan Perry celebrates on the 28th, Tim Fora on the 29th, John Wingard on, uh, Jordan Wingard on the 30th. Uh, then our assistant priest, Stephen Middlequirk, who uh, presided at the earlier service, celebrates his on the 1st, together with Ziggy Hardman and Chris Atwood and uh, Tamanda Munyala celebrates on Saturday. Uh, and then uh, to Trevor and Shirley Wegner, uh, congratulations, they joined us at the early service. They celebrate their wedding anniversary today. And um, their daughter, Mary Ann, and their son-in-law, Andrew, uh, celebrate their next Saturday. So our love and uh, congratulations to, to all who, who are celebrating this week. And if we have missed anybody, uh, of course, may, may you know that, that joy as well. Um, I'm going to now invite us all to greet one another. 
So in a moment, I will unmute everyone. Just say if you could turn on your uh, your your video, then we can we can see you too, and an opportunity just to greet. So one, two, three, unmute all. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi everybody. Have a good day. Everyone. God bless. Thank you everyone. Hi everyone. Great to see you all. Hi everyone. Are they okay? Hi everybody. Hi Naomi. No. Hi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> really good to see you all. Great, great to see you all there. Good <laughs> 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 Oh, Ava and Cora. Goodbye. Have a great Sunday, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.